we were given special permission to have our level seven modules in Canvas this year as part of piloting some of the tools to enable us to feed back to the rollout team and the online learning environment steering group some of the techniques and activities that we've tested within our modules that we can then support staff with in the rollout to level five, six and seven over the forthcoming year. So each of us are going to talk about our individual modules, just give you a little bit of background about the module and then talk about the assessment and feedback tools that we used embedded within Canvas that were specific within our module and why those tools worked, why we chose them and what we might do next. So to start with, mine is the first module that uh, the participants engage with. It's called Teaching and Supporting Learning. It's an introductory module. It's taught as a block. So they do two days, a Thursday and Friday, then a Monday, so it's three days. Um, it's not just for academic staff. It's for visiting lecturers. It's for practice teachers. It's for our research students. So we have about... Uh, 80 students in the semester A cohort and about 70 students in the semester B cohort. So we've had a lot of students on the module this year. It has three key assignments within it. The first is the students must write a detailed lesson plan. So they write a detailed lesson plan, thinking about their own practice and their own teaching. They have to articulate the lesson plan and also discuss how it relates to learning and teaching theories. From the lesson plan, they get written feedback. So they have written feedback, and that's been carried out and embedded within Canvas, which has been a really simple tool to use, the, just the normal feedback tool within Canvas. But what we also did within the module is set up the rubric system. So within Canvas, you can put in your own rubrics and mark according to the rubrics. So we decided to use the learning outcomes for the module as our rubrics. So not only did they receive general feedback about their lesson plan and their design, but they also identified elements of, of, as how well they'd met the learning outcomes by using these rubric tabs. The rubrics were really easy because once we've put the learning outcomes in, you can then just select and write a little bit about how well they've met the learning outcome. And once one person has typed some information in, that information is stored. So let's say then Peter is also marking on my module. He wants to write according to that rubric. My text is already there. He can either just use that or he can adapt it to give that directed feedback to that student. So Canvas stores a lot of the feedback that you're writing. So again, produces efficiencies for other people marking or for subsequent marking activities. The participants then do a teaching observation and they go and do a session and they're observed by either one of Learning and Teaching Innovation Centre staff or one of our senior fellows within the university or other academic staff around the university who support us in this process. They're observed on their session. They receive oral feedback, intensive oral feedback immediately after the session. That usually takes about an hour. It's a really important conversation. So they get oral feedback on their teaching observation and they also then get written feedback that they then reflect on and submit as part of their work. The final assignment that the participants do is the reflection of an observation of someone else's teaching. So we ask them to go and observe a session of someone within their discipline, perhaps an expert, someone who's got a really good uh, reputation within their school who's a great teacher. They go and observe their session and then they reflect on what they thought was good about the session, what they think they could do differently, what worked really well, how did that person engage student learning. So they're reflecting on the benefit of observing others. And for that assignment, they submit their reflection, and we decided to use the video feedback tool within Canvas to give them their mark and give them feedback in this element. We were quite prescriptive about how to use the video tool. So it was the first time we'd done it, but we were clear that we should try not to give more than two minutes feedback, that we should identify key points that they'd done well, key things that they could have done to improve, and that really would be enough for the two minutes. The video tool, again, is exceptionally easy to use. You just press the button and you record. Now, for some people who are comfortable with video, that's great. For other people, that was a little bit uncomfortable and they wanted to make multiple recordings, but that's easy within the Canvas tool itself. Other people also made notes and then spoke to their notes or other people just read the reflection 
and then just recorded straight into the video tool. I think what we all found, though, is the more we did, the easier it got, as we do with any new marking activity. So we can see when we are giving the feedback that we can think about how that feedback works, but also then we wanted to capture from the participants how they'd found the feedback. So using the survey tool within Canvas, Silani and Chiaki have just presented on quizzes within Canvas, you can use a survey tool. We asked the participants, did they prefer the video or the audio, oh, sorry, the video or the written feedback that they'd received on the different assignments? It was interesting, as the data came in, it was very much a 50-50 split. Then at the end of the process, after both cohorts, semester A and semester B had given their feedback, we actually found that there was a preference for the written feedback, which had occurred on the lesson plan. But most people who'd said they preferred the written feedback also said, but they also really found the video feedback useful as well. And we saw comments such as this about the written feedback. It's easier and quicker to go back and look at specific points rather than having to watch a video. But for the video feedback, people who preferred that really focused on the emotion that they got within the video and the communication from the marker about how well they'd done, what they could do differently. So really having that emotional connect with our, in our case, our students to think about what they could improve. Importantly within CPAD is that our staff members, who of course are our students, experience the assessments and then think about do they want to use that within their own teaching so we did see quite a few comments about how people who'd experienced receiving video feedback were then really keen to use the video feedback in their own teaching with their students the one thing that didn't come out particularly well or people didn't seem very bothered about was actually the rubrics so where we'd use comments according to the learning outcomes embedded within rubrics within canvas Participants didn't seem that fussed about it. They liked more specific comments about their piece of work, either written or the video. So that was my module. Uh, thank you very much, Helen. Uh, if, I, if I'm saying something that Helen's already said or I miss anything out, I'll, so apologies for being late. It's a bit of a tight turnaround. Um, so my module's the second in the, in the program, and unlike Helen's, it's taught over eight weeks. So the, we have a focus on uh, collaboration, um, students are uh, assessed in groups initially. They do a piece of collaborative writing together. Um, and so the two groups of assessment, which you see there, so eight three-hour sessions and two different assessment cycles. So the first cycle, which is collaborative writing, um, students write together in threes or fours to produce a piece of writing, and the first submission is formative. So we give quick feedback within a week on the drafting um, and they then resubmit that same piece of work and that's the summative piece of work. And because collaboration and group work is an essential part of that module, we ask students to choose a method of peer evaluation. So I use Canvas quizzes to offer two schemes which have been uh, tried and tested. One is an anonymous grading scheme where you give your peers in your group a numbered grade and the other one is which has been chosen the twice that I've done this is a face-to-face -face grading system where the tutor marks the formative marks the written piece of work gives that a grade then the group of students have a block of marks which are that tutor grade plus the number in the group and they choose how to distribute the marks between them um, and most of the groups distribute them equally but there is some difference which reflects the contribution of each to the group. So collaborative working, and Canvas is interesting on the collaborative working, and so we're very pleased to see you can have a group submission, which obviously we've we'd not had that facility in StudyNet. Um, and the second piece of work is a presentation of a teaching idea, which is done individually. So a, an idea for a teaching activity, and again, there's a formative submission on which peer feedback is given in one of the face-to-face -face sessions, and then there's a live teaching session um, later on in the module. So, uh, putting students in groups was great. Very easy to drag and drop into the group area, and setting up the groups, again, very intuitive. So that, that aspect of using the group work function here and putting students into groups so that they can collaborate within Canvas together worked really, really well. Very straightforward. Um, 
I like the way, and if you saw on that the first slide, the, the three pieces of assessment that are linked in the first one and the two in the second one, it's very easy to see how you, if you've got a cycle of assessment activity which is linked, that's nicely obvious in Canvas. Um, it is easy to set up the groups manually. Um, any student can submit, and that is, that's an interesting and a much better feature than we'd had before. So every student can submit, or just one can be chosen to submit for the group. So uh, it makes that submission of a group written piece of work much easier. Uh, you can send back your comments to everybody. Um, people submitting can make a comment to the whole group, or you can do that individually. Um, the presentation of a teaching activity is interesting because the work goes on in a face-to-face -face session. There's no online submission for that. So the feedback we chose to give through the Canvas system again, and that's very simple to do. So a written feedback sheet is produced digitally, and then the tutors who mark the teaching activity and the presentation of that upload that within Canvas. Um, and that's very easy. Oh, I will find it fairly straightforward, yeah. Oh, I suppose I haven't, sorry, because I can't see that. I should be looking at it down there, shouldn't I? So the other thing that's simple, because there's a peer evaluation element, so that second cycle of activity, each group will then submit a form which has their individual marks on. So what Canvas has made really simple is, uh, because the document loads in the browser straight away, transferring the individual mark into the system, so it appears in the gradebook on Canvas, is also way easier. So there's no download, read it, upload. It's all very much more seamless, um, so we like that very much. There's a spread of opinion about marking in SpeedGrade. I don't know if you've talked about that, Helen, already. So I really like SpeedGrade. I love the fact that the document loads in the window and you just do it from there. But it has got a few more tools. So some people were finding that transition from marking in Word and markup documents to be a little bit confusing because you can colour code everything. And I know Dave's done some interesting work in education on, you know, adopting a programme wide approach to how you give the feedback so you can colour code it for easy for students to see what they're being given feedback about. Um, yes, and the, other, the only other sort of question mark over it was, and it's a known issue, it's quite difficult to find the feedback as a student. So that's an interesting thing for our participants who are staff giving feedback to students. It's not obvious. It's fine once you've done it. And obviously our Canvas support team made a lovely little video that shows you where to find it. But that was one of the stumbling blocks initially. Peter. I don't know if I can see that far, but I'll have a go. Um, I co-teach uh, on a module with Cordelia Bryan called Linking Pedagogic Theory to Practice. And... Um, one of the things that I, I find particularly intriguing about this is because it gives students an opportunity to take a step towards becoming an educational developer. It, it's, um, it's an opportunity for them to choose a subject that's important in their own practice, research it, and write it as a research journal article of three and a half thousand words. And some students who have been successful in this have uh, published it in our in-house journal uh, blended learning and practice, but also some have chosen to actually publish it elsewhere. So this really is taking theory into practice and, and also an opportunity to take that step. So in a way, it's the student's own choice, and I, I find that quite an exciting prospect. Um, okay, so what do, what do they have to do in their assessment? Well, over, a, over the course of a semester where they have eight three-hour meetings, uh, we prepare them to create a draft, which is more or less halfway through the, the process. And, and the draft article should be at least 50%. And, and we prepare them over the course of the, the first four sessions to give a presentation and then write on that. But the last two parts are, are the most important, I think, where they are given that draft, one of their colleagues' drafts, and they perform a peer review on it. And we have in the system some formative assessment on how to create a, a peer review using all the sort of ethics and processes that you need to do if you are um, reviewing for a journal article. They then produce their final research article. So that's, um, that's, that's the, the process. Uh, and in, for, for some students, they find this really quite challenging because particularly for people who've come from uh, vocational uh, subjects, they may have come in as a professional and never have written anything that's um, going to go towards publication. 
Right, let's, uh, let's just talk about the assessment opportunities. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's one of those, when you go last in a presentation, it's all of the above. But there is one thing that I want to uh, stress, uh, given the time that I have, and, and that is that we have used a survey, a, a quiz, if, if you like, uh, well, a couple of them. And we, we have used that to inform our immediate teaching. And I don't know if any of you know the literature on just-in-time teaching, but that's been the principle that we've used. So that, for example, um, in week two, we talk briefly about research-informed teaching. It's a revisitation, if you like. But we have a survey on that, and we collect the students' views in order to be able to inform of the presentation that we give in session five on that. So it's um, a formative assessment, but it's also informing our teaching. And I think just-in-time teaching is, is a way forward. It, it requires a bit of legwork. And I, I did this with a, with a colleague, Grant Beige, who, um, well, without his support, I wouldn't have been able to do this, this quite frankly. But what we were able to do was then tailor-make the, pre the presentation that we gave to the students in session five based on their responses to our, our survey out to them. Um, so, um, as I said, all of the above, but I, I do want to add some, some areas for consideration. Uh, and being a, a little bit old-fashioned, um, I was a little bit twitchy about using Canvas, but, but now I'm not. I'm a, com a quick convert, actually, because I find it uh, really very accessible uh, to someone who uh, comes from the Luddite sort of, you know, school, of, school of technology. Um, but the, the things that I think still need to be uh, worked on are the processes for double-blind marking. What we have, um, because this is, um, if you like, a mini-dissertation, we've got a double-blind marking system, and, and it's difficult for us to operate that through Canvas. And I think that's, um, that's uh, something that's a work in development. We've made that known. Um, and also, the allocation of drafts for students to do their peer reviews. Um, what we try to do is we try to match students up so that it can be an anonymous peer review, but still students will have some knowledge in that cognate area. So that's a little bit of a tricky one for, for Canvas to perform. And, and I'm only worrying, we, we've had a group of 27 and then 42-ish, I can't remember, whatever. And, um, but if the group were to be very large, then handling that would be a little bit tricky, so that needs some thinking. Um, and from my own perspective, the annotation of scripts on Canvas is not quite as slick as, as in Word. So, a, a number of themes have come out for us as we've been trying these different tools. You can see them up here. I mean, part of it has been that upskilling with our marking, but also that dialogic communication with our students. It's been really effective either in the just-in-time teaching or also using video feedback. We, the tools we've used obviously relate to our principles of good practice and assessment for learning. But also, there's some things that we want to develop in the future. So we are thinking about doing video briefs for all of our assignments, particularly two of our modules within the program are block taught. So by the time the students come to do the assignments, it's a few weeks, maybe a month or so later. So doing a video brief, a, remind, a reminder about the assignment is something we're thinking about. We are going to think about a formative activity in my module about accessibility, so how Canvas has accessibility checker tools within it, so an activity for students to think about their accessibility within their teaching. And also, we'll be really making use of the program assessment landscapes that we'll be able to see within Canvas. Hopefully, the new Canvas assignment system, which we are hoping will be implemented by September, will iron out those issues with the double-blind marking. So, just a quick whistle-stop tour of some of the tools we've used. I've terribly badly and not chaired myself well, but there's time for one question. Just bombarded them with too much information. Okay, time good. For, time, <laughs> time, time for half a question now. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other questions about Canvas, come and speak to us in, in lunchtime, and then uh, you want to move to your next session.